Hello and welcome back to the calculator review. This is actually not a review. This is a my first uh, cleanup and teardown video. So I received or I purchased this Casio today. It's a graphing calculator for nine bucks at a used book bookstore. It's the FX 7400G Plus. Um, I'm not going to get too into details about it because I haven't done a lot of research on it. But what made me want to do this video was looking at the battery compartment. It's got some severe corrosion, some really old batteries in there. So I'm going to clean that up, get, the, get some new batteries in it, and test it out. And if it works, I'll continue the teardown. So, starting out, pop these absolutely disgusting batteries out. Uh, this is actually some of the worst corrosion I've seen so far. And I'd rather not get this stuff on my hands, so I've got to be careful. So yeah, it looks like these batteries have actually burst. And really in there. Ooh, okay. Alright, so yeah, this is a... Uh, Oh, this is workable. This isn't actually that bad. But it looked a lot worse with the batteries still in there. So I'm going to dispose of these. Alright, so I like to use isopropyl alcohol when removing corrosion. This helps displace a lot of the water and it will dry up really quickly. I'm not giving it a thorough, thorough cleaning. I just want to get the connectors just clean enough to, oh, oh, wow, just clean enough to insert new batteries safely. Honestly, this cleaned up a lot easier than I expected. I thought this was going to be a lot worse. Though I still haven't looked at the uh, 2032s in here as the, back, the backup batteries. Don't want to mess with those if I don't have to, but I might have to. All right, so I've got two fresh batteries. <laughs> two fresh batteries. Let's see if it powers up. Uh, where's the on button? Ah, awesome. Power you right up. So let's do a quick calculation. Ninety-nine times six. Nice. Works beautifully. Alright, so I probably will still replace the battery in here just to be safe. But this comes with a warning saying that it needs to have at least one of these batteries in at all times. So I'll have to replace them one at a time to be safe. But I'm very happy to see that this thing's working wasn't exactly my cheapest calculator. These screws are in pretty tight. I don't think this thing's ever been disassembled before. But I can almost guarantee that there's going to be some uh, battery juice inside this thing. Definitely want to get that cleaned out so it doesn't cause further damage. Oh man. I'd be really careful not to strip these screws because I don't want to have to replace them. The less I have to spend on a calculator, the better. Ooh. So the other reason I take these apart is because I like to get pictures of the insides of it for the reviews. Try to take a holistic approach 
to my reviews. Not just look and feel or functionality, but just overall. Wow, these are really tight. So calculator manufacturers, take note, place the batteries in an easily accessible place if you're not going to go with solar power. If you notice, most of my positive reviews are of calculators with batteries that are very easy to access. Not 100% of my reviews, but it's usually a sign of a calculator that I'm going to like because batteries don't last forever and also as someone who repairs them and collects them I would like to avoid the corrosion and also if you're going to be donating calculators or selling them just remove the batteries uh, really that's any electronic device because I don't know how many times I've purchased electronics at Goodwill and just found unbelievable amounts of corrosion just because nobody bothered to remove the batteries. So if you'd like to save people like me a little bit of trouble, that'd be much appreciated. Oh, looks like that backup battery needs to be removed as well. At least the screw. easily that can apart. Huh. Not a whole lot of leakage on the inside. It's a really good sign. Just, oh, so much for avoiding the CR2032 problem. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to get this cleaned up with some alcohol. Remove as much as I can. Doesn't look like I'm going to need to re-solder anything, which is always good because I am terrible at soldering. I'm going to get all this battery juice out of here. I want this calculator to last. So another reason I take these apart is I like to see if I can find the year of manufacture because a lot of times old electronics will have a date printed somewhere on the inside. It's really cool when I can get super specific answers on this kind of stuff. Man, this thing is in great shape considering how little the last owner cared about it. That is very good. So this I'm going to wash with soap and water. I'm not going to do this on camera because it's not interesting. Get all these little metal pieces out. Oh, that's interesting. Everything a nice thorough washing. So, I don't know if you can really see it on this cheap camera, but there's a lot of debris that's fallen out of it, mostly battery corrosion. Mm, 
On second thought, I'm not going to remove the screen components because there's two ribbons at 90 degree angles to each other. If I try to remove that, I'm going to snap something. So I'm just going to give this the best cleanup I can from where it is. This is a... Uh, I was actually really excited to find this calculator, and the review will explain why, but the last thing I want to do is damage it. Some calculators I'm okay with taking risks, not this one. to avoid causing any damage to the plastic. So I don't typically use isopropyl alcohol. I use these Lysol wipes. These give it a nice clean up without leaving any residue or causing any additional damage. But they're not good for electronic components. But all in all, like, I'm quite pleased with this. I'm very excited that this thing actually works. So sadly there's no date printed on the inside, at least not that I can see. do some research to find out what's when this thing came out. So like I said, I found this for $9 at a used bookstore. Actually found a lot there. But this one was in the worst shape of all of them. I have this trusty little knife for removing labels. I try to avoid using Google as well because while I've got it, it always leaves behind a residue that just feels impossible to remove. I mean, I can get it with enough scrubbing, but I can avoid using it, I do. That's one of my last resort tools. And the label came off this just fine. I can remove without using soap and water. Right, so I'll get all these little 90 degree angles. This is where a lot of dust collects. Let's just give them a nice thorough scrubbing.
it's always nice to see that nothing on the inside is snapped. I usually have to super glue a lot of pieces back together on especially cheap calculators made of garbage plastic. But I don't have to worry too much with a Casio calculator because they're usually really durable. I've become something of a Casio fanboy since I've started collecting calculators. Because everything I have found from them has been extremely reliable. And just all around really solid. It's much appreciated. So. I don't know if that 2032 is any good, but I'm going to replace it anyway. Looks like the spring mechanism is mostly clean. It's hard to see. Even without the camera, it's hard to see, but these clothes are just sort of falling off now. So that should work like new. So at the very least, if I can't repair damage, I try to at least stop whatever damage is occurring in the calculator. So a lot of times I'll see things like uh, rust on the inside of some of these. So what I do is I, I remove as much as I can. said that as if I had more I was going to say, but I actually don't. Uh, really the point was just trying to prevent additional damage from happening to a calculator. Because these are typically pretty simple devices. They're not like your PCs or laptops. These will survive more likely. But they do need to be cared for. Let me hit this with some alcohol just to displace any water I might have accidentally got in there. Give this a moment to dry. So every calculator I get goes through a treatment similar to this. They all get an equal amount of care regardless of their quality because I want to review them as fairly as possible. I want the calculator to be in a decent working condition. It's not always possible, as you'll see in one of my reviews this week. It's a pretty unfair review, but You'll see. All right, so this was facing. Okay. This back in there. Right, I need to 
to place this 2032, so let's go in the garbage. I don't know whether it works or not. And then I've got a couple of spare 2032s lying around. This is another thing. Uh, if you're going to make a calculator that uses any kind of battery, go with 2032s. They are the most easily found and reliable batteries. But they're using everything, so you might as well use them in your device. I pointed out before that I cannot stand buying the same batteries over and over. Alright, so that looks okay to me. Stick in the brand new 2032. Before I go too far, just want to make sure I didn't fuck anything up. And it's on. Excellent. Right. Uh, shift off. Okay. So it's now got a brand new backup battery. All that nasty corrosion's removed. This calculator is basically new again. I highly recommend if you're going to repair any sort of electronics, get yourself a decent set of screwdrivers. Uh, I have these Weha screwdrivers that I was given as a gift, and I love them. They're slightly magnetic, so they can pick up and hold screws. assembled this thing as well. Another thing is, as a collector, look for things that are in rough shape like this. Look for things that You've got to repair on your own because odds are they're going to be sold for much cheaper. And because most people don't want to deal with it, they just want to get rid of it. So if you can find something that needs a bit of love before it's going to work just right, go for it. The tools required aren't that expensive. and you'll save a lot of money in the long run. But most of the things I buy are used. I find I can save a lot of money doing that. Just a life tip in general. Alright, now I get more of this stuff on there.
So once I have everything reassembled, I give it another wipe down. Anything I might have missed or just dust that's fallen off from other things. free cloth to get any random things that have fallen on. And thus, uh, <laughs> I don't want to mess with this. calculator. I'll keep the batteries out so that I don't have that corrosion problem again. And what did I do with the lid? So there you have it, a complete cleanup, teardown, and reassembly of the Casio FX 7400G+. This will be reviewed at a later date. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.